What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Whale Nerds Podcast. This is episode number 71. My name is Slater, and I'm here with Adam, Eric, and Caitlin. Hey, everyone. What's up? Hello. Do you guys know that I just hit him with an A-E-K because his letters are in order in the alphabet? Nice. Did you really do that on purpose? Yeah, you said alphabetic order earlier. He's all about (laughs) alphabetical order lately. Yeah. I never learned the alphabet, so I don't know what you're talking about. Stop. Drama you know, that's why Caitlin writes my, past, my captions back, <laughs> Seriously. In, back in 012. No, I wasn't writing them then. Don't put that on me. 012. <laughs> he didn't even know each other then. I wasn't born no. yet. I didn't so. even look at whales. Oh, yeah, yeah, Adam wasn't even alive yet. <laughs> I was whale watching on the nacho truck. I was literally giving, n- making nachos. Oh, yeah, on the bu- <laughs> popcorn. Uh. The popcorn, yeah, popcorn wagon. And nachos. But they literally <laughs> sold the popcorn as, as bird food. <laughs> when it would go bad. Bird food. Time to change, Simpson. How are you guys doing? How's everybody? Only a little. Good. Gray whales. Okay. Owls. Good. Eric. Okay, cool. Caitlin, how you doing? What's up? What's new? Dude, I'm exhausted. I've been working wow. so much. Look Dude, at me back too. Whales. Yeah, help back whales. Dolphins. Turtles. What kind oh, of turtles? Me. Oh boy. <laughs> Green sea turtles, dude. All of Ridley's. I don't think all of Ridley's. Did, did they ever get there? Today. Mm, There's um, another turtle that's been I there, don't though, think right? So. A There's hawksbill. Hawksbill. Hawksbills and green. Yeah. What about letterbacks? He just doesn't quit, does he? He just never, never, never. quits. He's relentless. Never. The funny thing He's is, relentless. Caitlin's seen more whales than all of us, dude. I well, don't think so. How many well, North the, and right the, whales have you seen? Or Atlantic right whales have you seen, Eric? None. But yeah. I think total number of whales. How many monk seals have you seen? I don't know, Eric. I got to stretch you years in Monterey. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay because none of you have seen a basking shark, and I have, so. Why do we have to do this? Like every my camera, episode? My camera saw a basking shark. Your Did camera it? saw it, but you didn't have yeah, that. Yeah, you hear that sense. story? No. On my on the Harbor Breeze boats. What happened. did you loan your camera to a crew member? Yes, I loaned my camera to the first naturalist because I <laughs> ran a second trip and they took a picture of a dorsal fin like, hey, what's this? I was like, damn you. <laughs> <laughs> what's this turkey burger? <laughs> Beluga whales? No. Anyone? No. All right, dude. We already know I win. Anyways. Super, super know. rare. Super, super Blue rare. The dogs. dogs? Super yeah. ultra, ultra rare. What did you say? Super ultra rare? Is that what you used to call those killer whales? <laughs> <laughs> He's like, yeah, it was uh, Emma. Super, no, they're super ultra mega rare. Super ultra mega rare. You're ridiculous. Yeah, All right, know. anyways, um, I want to hear some fun updates from Adam and Slater. Um, Adam, Adam, the end is in sight, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Dude, today was freaking brutal. Okay, so we finally got our boat back in the water. The Condor Express is in the water. It floats. It floats, kind of. <laughs> but we're still at the dock, and that's fun. But um, today, we started the engines for the first time, and those new engines are freaking sweet. We got new Scania engines. We got four of them. And uh, we have some problems with the throttles that I've been trying to figure out, and I think I finally Probably dialed it in today. Probably because you wired them wrong. No, no, no. The wiring <laughs> is, is correct, but it's just a whole, it's a whole thing because the, the, the throttles – the, the displays are connected to the other displays. And so like when one display turns off, the other display turns off and it's just, it's all backwards. Did but you, did I'm you gonna... check the uh, flux capacitor? Usually that's the problem. <laughs> yeah. So the, the flux capacitor <laughs> is in full working um, shape. So when we hit 88 knots, um, uh-huh. we'll, we'll be solid. Well, it's not that. One bow? <laughs> what? <laughs> did you set it to one bow? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, we're getting there. So hopefully in the next week or so, we will start running trips again. So if you guys want to come by watching Santa Barbara, just be on the lookout for any of my social media pages or the Condor Express social media pages. And, you know, we don't want to like announce it and then have some difficulties that set it back further. So we're waiting till we actually get back in Santa Barbara and feel comfortable with the new engines and the new throttles and the new everything. So 
be on the lookout. Probably in the next week or two, we'll be uh, we'll a, be back running trips. What a concept! Don't offer trips till you're sure the boat's ready. <laughs> yeah, right. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> Are you guys hauled out in Ventura? Yeah, so we have to drive down to Ventura every day. Um, it's not too bad, but uh, I'm. What time do you wake up? Really, uh, like six. Oh god. Okay, I was gonna say because you saw my story. Yeah, I think you commented on it this morning, right? Yeah, I did. Yeah, we get we usually start working at eight. Um, meet at the harbor at seven, drive down. Um, but tomorrow is going to be a big day. Hopefully, if we figure out these throttle controls and the displays, we're going to take her out for a little run. A little sea trial. A little sea trial. It's so cool, dude. We freaking hit 2,300 RPMs, and we haven't done that since, like, the boat was built. We usually run at, like, 1,850, and it's going to be sweet. Well, yeah, I mean, just because it can run at 2,300 doesn't mean you should run Okay, at no, but that's, that's like... <laughs> That was using like ninety four percent of the uh, of the capacity of the engines, so we'll probably run around like two thousand, which is at like seventy percent of the. Did you guys get uh, new props? New, new props and shafts. It's or? jets. Oh, jet, dude. Oh, you guys are jet. Yeah, we got. Oh, they've been jet. jet. Oh, oh, I didn't know you guys are jet. Were you jet yeah, before got... though? Yeah. yeah, we've always been jet. Oh, okay. That's the that's the best part about that boat. There's no chance of hurting any whales. Not, gonna... not true, but that's not a lot true. Less okay, we're not gonna we're not gonna prop them. All right. <laughs> there's well, no chance you're gonna put lines across the whale. Let's yeah, not talk right. about that. What's that, Eric? Oh, the original Condor. I wonder how old that thing is now. Oh, uh, that thing's old. That thing's down in San Diego. Um, but yeah, it's looking up. I'm gonna be ha- happy camper in a week, but uh, it's still brutal. So. <laughs> it's all right. You're almost there. Yeah, we're getting there. I see the I see the end of the end of the tunnel. I see the, the boat's light. In, the boat's in the water. That's a big sigh of relief. <laughs> it is in the water. Yeah, that's I don't know. I'm really excited. So if you guys want to join me on an adventure, we're we're coming soon. To a theater near you. The grand re grand reopening. All right, Slater. I want to, I want you to tell us your update. Your life update. Your life updates, ladies. My life update is that basically I'm working on a. I don't know how to phrase it. I guess it would be like a, a scout, a scout boat slash like media boat in Newport, where we just go out to find whales in the morning and help the other bigger boats get a easier lead on them, and also to film whales for social media content and personal content. Oh, so like everybody's dream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. And oh, the first day was pretty horrible. Like we found this hump, this humpback whale next to a fin whale, and then we waited for it to come up, and then we were just sitting there talking, and it came up underneath the boat. Pretty horrible. That sucks. Yeah. What a That's terrible good. first day. Worst day ever. Honestly, it was kind of mind blowing. We were so in shock. I was like, the whale's under the boat. And Kristen looks at me and she's like, What are you talking about? And she thought I was joking because she was just saying, like, how mugged her friend the evening before on a sailboat. And I was like, It's under the boat. Like, get your camera. And I'm like running to the bow and I have my, <laughs> I have my buff on. So I'm trying to unlock my phone because, like, the camera is not going to do it. Like, you're, I, I don't know. I had my wide angle on actually at the time, but it was still really early in the morning, like 6 45. So we didn't really have a lot of light. And the uh my mask was on so i couldn't unlock my phone with my face password so (laughs) so then i'm like scrambling to get it and then yeah we got some cool cool little video clips of it underneath the boat for it did it for like a couple minutes and then it just kind of went on and then we just kind of idled like way back behind it and it went down and then sure enough it's literally bow riding the boat again like like 20 minutes later it did it what a cute little whale and then we followed it in it to the beach it went all the way into the beach and then started feeding with some dolphins and then some of the other bigger whale watch boats came so we kind of split because we already had some good looks at it we didn't want to spend too much time with it because we knew the other boats were gonna you know come check it out so that was a good first day and this morning we found a whale we left the dock at six o'clock found the first or found the only hump back at 6 45 a.m exactly 6.48 6.48 a.m. is the first photo I took of it. And then at 7.45 at lunch bed. <laughs> Dude. 
<laughs> Epic. <laughs> Although you're, you although you're tell the rest. There was, the timing there was a little off. You said seven thirty four. Sorry, seven thirty four at lunch bed. Okay. Oh my god, seven thirty four at lunch bed. Lunch bed. <laughs> oh, but you know what? The water has been like pretty much crystal clear. In some spots, it's green, but it's like it's like a super clean, clean like twenty five plus visibility. You know, like clean, clean green. So the dolphins and whale is like very visible. And today we had a huge school of anchovies, probably like, I don't know, 600, no, I'd say like 300 yards wide, like a square. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Dang. Yeah, what so, else did I need to say? So what I'm... Um, well, at some point the whale got full, and then what did it do? Oh, yeah, so the whale was um, literally just sitting in the middle of the bait ball, like just waving its peck fans for like hours. <laughs> Just like do 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 do. Just like it was just sitting there, and then it would like slowly float up to the surface, and all the anchovies would like scatter into a circle around it, and then it would just like wave its peck fins up forward, like almost like it was trap feeding, and then it would just like sink back out, and then it would everyone. No, but then like every like hour or so, it would randomly just take like a, a little mouthful and feed again. It's like it wanted to eat so bad, but it was so full, it didn't so know what funny. to do. The funny then, thing is, all that time, the whale stays there. I mean, looking at your video, the fish stay there, the whale stays there. It's funny how the anchovies don't go, we should probably leave because this guy eats this. They're just like, let's just wait here to die. Like, Dude, our whole family got eaten <laughs> that last bite. But yeah, we'll exactly. Here we'll just hang out him. here. I don't think they have that kind of thought capacity. Yeah. I think they're <laughs> like, like, our meat, food's here. Meat, let's meat. stay here. Yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah, Bob, Dave, all them, they just got lunch bed on. I'll just hang out right here where they died. Well, and then on top of that, the dolphins are picking them off, like, you know, <laughs> one by one on the edge of the bait ball. All right. Maybe that's that. why they didn't move. They just got petrified in fear. Let's do an anchovy study on it's anchovy so funny competition. He was literally, <laughs> yeah, like, so corralling them. Fish. He was literally, like, corralling them, but for no reason. Like, just for fun. <laughs> Might so, be. So, in conclusion, Slatermore Photography is back. Uh, I'm back on the water, that's for sure. <laughs> Adam! You got some awesome content. Content! Adam's, like, so stoked Adam's on the fact that the Slater's world. out. I'm so stoked, dude. That's my guy. I mean, it's nice to have a hype man like Adam. Oh, it's been sure. nice to be on the water again. Oh, you just completely It's nice to me. leave early. Yeah. Like, 6 a.m. and, like... I can't tell you that it is so much easier to find whales, especially in a place that it's a lot harder to find whales. Yeah. But it makes it much nicer when you can look into the sun coming over to over the you know over the mountains, and it's like blows get a good angle on it. Yeah, they get lit up so well. But I will tell you something that's weird is that I haven't seen a gray whale, and now they did see one yesterday, and they saw one today. Uh, we were with the humpback, and it was lunch feeding, so we didn't want to go to the gray whale, but. Like two gray whales, I feel like it's pretty peak time to see a gray whale. And I know it's kind yeah, of a like log. Right They're about to switch. There. They're about to switch and be more northbound, right? But yeah, we already got more northbounds the other day. Yeah, one of them was northbound today. It just seems like uh, just when seems are we like going to see thirty of, of them? You know, like usually you can see thirty in one trip at this time of year. It seems Things like they're kind of late. Listen. Newport. They were late. They're late. I mean, we Here talked in. about that in. Um, Episode sixty nine, I think. Yeah, okay. they were late. Um, at least from the Baja <laughs> perspective, or at least, um, or maybe they're not gonna go at all. What's so right? funny? I don't Nothing. Know. It's me and Adam being kids. You guys are being whatever. <laughs> um. Yeah, it seems like they're late. So either they're not going to migrate at all, or they're just really, really delayed trying to get that last meal, and so everything's going to be pushed back a couple weeks. But, I mean, part of me kind of thinks, like, maybe not as many went by, and it's too bad because this is the year where you can't get all the survey effort out because of COVID. So we're kind of missing it, I think. Unless Granite Canyon is still doing their work through NOAA with the infrared data collection. Um that I'm not sure, but like Point Vicente, that program's not happening because of COVID. And I think the lagoon, San Ignacio lagoon count did happen, and it is straight out low too. Yeah. 
very scary low actually kind of yeah yeah i do want to say something about the last two last three days the first day we went out was just to le like learn the boat that we got but the um we picked up a couple balloons that day i don't remember how many oh i saw your video that was and then awful. the second day we picked uh well we picked up no i'm sorry we picked up nine balloons the first day eight balloons the first day and the second day we picked up a party city bat a bag a huge big trash bag thing full of like eight plus balloons easily you should have mm -hmm. put that on their social media <laughs> seriously you should have tagged them and been like and then, what's up with this so then i thought we were gonna pick up like a chip bag like it was a big chip bag and it's like completely puffed up and it looks like brand new well we pick it up it's literally a um a package a fully packaged two smoke alarms like a two pack of smoke alarm <laughs> Like, and they were fresh. They were, like, like a good I don't need package. these. Dude, I need, I need some new ones. I need some new ones. It was, like, definitely yeah, probably, like, yeah, a yacht smoke alarm. Yeah, can you tell where they came alarm. from? No, I, and we threw them away, and I was like, we should take pictures of this at the end of the day. Because we also picked up, like, three or four more. We had, like, ten plus balloons yesterday. Right after Valentine's Day is the Valentine's worst. Day, yep. Oh, they're all pink and, and like, yeah. Heart, I love Heart, you. Pink and red balloons, yeah. There was a couple. There was, like, a birthday one, but most of them were all pink and red. And then we picked up a couple today as well. It's like, dude, over like 30 balloons probably easily. And there was – it's like, dude, you could sit there and honestly stop every ten, like quarter mile. Like mm -hmm. if you – you know, if you see them. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, my gosh. So bad, man. Yeah. So I if, picked up a pool guys... noodle out of the ocean today. Oh. Nice. It's <laughs> probably, behind. probably your boat. <laughs> no, we don't use pool noodles Oh, anymore. you guys don't? You don't? Nope. Nope. <laughs> No, this was like a really big one that had like stripes on it, which is like not what any of the snorkel boats use. So it might have come from someone from shore. Hmm. But um, and then our boats actually last week, two different boats, one out of Lahaina and one out of Malai, picked up huge knotted messes of drift oh, nets. I saw that. That thing was huge. Yeah. One whale of them was size. so heavy. Yeah. yeah. One of them was bigger. It was like three or four si whale size. We had to use yeah. a crane to get it off the boat. It was so oh, heavy, it took, that. like, five people and two boat hooks to get it on board. Jeez. And there was so much fish inside it that they actually called the Maui Ocean Center, uh, which is mm -hmm. in our complex in Ma'alaya. Mm -hmm. And they, like, came and took the fish and, like, put them in the back area of the aquarium. Oh, jeez. Yeah. What kind of fish were in there? Uh, well, you always see lots of fro uh, frog fish when we... Oh, no way. Yeah. And... Um, Cute. But I don't know what the other ones were. I just saw the like group messages about it. Like, oh hey, we called Maui Ocean Center and like they sent us some pictures of like the tanks, but I couldn't see what was in it. That's cool. I'm glad they saved so, them. Yeah, dude, that's crazy how heavy it was. We also picked up a huge throw ring, big orange one, like you know with the boat name on it. Yeah. It said Long Beach and it started with the V. I forget the name, like Veli or Velen or. It was definitely like a big dinner cruise boat one. Like, you know what so I mean? So if you're it... missing your throw ring. <laughs> <laughs> I put it in Newport the office landing. in Newport. <laughs> Those things are probably like they're a couple expensive. hundred bucks, I bet. Yeah. I guarantee they're not cheap. Yeah, they're expensive. But also, like, why did they lose it? Did they throw it to someone and then, like, the person didn't I know. get it? Or did yeah, it, like, fall thing. overboard? Gonna be, like, hands going to be, like, attached to this thing when we grab oh, it. Oh, God. <laughs> no. God. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. Maybe somebody was just like trying to, somebody was messing with it and they were trying to put it back and it fell. Could have been training or something. Yeah. <laughs> they failed. <laughs> Practice. Yeah. Man, obviously. Practice obviously. Man, obviously. Did not pass. <laughs> did not pass. <laughs> um, so what else did you see? Bottlenose dolphins, common dolphins. Yeah, we had offshore. Oh, yeah. The first day when we were, we had offshore bottlenose, common dolphins. <laughs> I'm back way out. Oh, so so the first day actually that we were training on the boat or learning, like the guy was just passing us the keys and you know telling us like where the batteries and stuff like that. But he or so we had, I we found a, a whale. We were like, the, there's a blow definitely inside of us. We figured it was on the beach, might be just like a gray whale. So we went over to it, and then I called Mike Owens on the Ocean Explorer. I said, hey, turn left. We got a whale, and he was like, it's probably the humpback because it was with. He was assuming that the humpback was going to be with the common dolphins. That's where we were. We were well, that's what we were with, and he was with them the day before. Well, I was like, uh, it popped up eventually, and it was definitely one hundred thousand percent a humpback whale. It took like six breaths and then went down. Well, all the boats came over to us, and then a fin whale pops up. So now I'm like, dude, I swear I had a humpback whale. So then this fin whale comes up, and then they get like two looks at it, and it just disappears. Well, we're like, okay, I don't know what to tell you guys. And then sure enough, a humpback had spotted like a little more south of us. 
it's like, okay, that was definitely our humpback. It split off with the dolphins and went south, and this fin whale just, like, came through and distracted everyone. And then they <laughs> – so, like, nobody got to see whales except for us. And, like, I don't know. Oh. It was weird. Fired. <laughs> but when we found that humpback the second day, we – right, we were just looking at a blow in the distance, and we pulled up, and we stopped and waited. A fin whale popped up. But then the fin whale went down. It took two breaths and went down, and we're like, okay, this could be forever. You never know. And a humpback whale pops up, like, 200 yards behind us. So, again, the humpback was with the fin whale. Damn pesky mm. boys. Yeah. <laughs> they're having a secret rendezvous before you guys get there, and then they're like, oh, 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 they're catching us. Yeah, and that was, like, seven miles from Dana Point. It really feels like that some days. Like, four boats show up, and you're like, what happened? Did you drown? <laughs> <laughs> what? How long I can hold my breath? Oh. <laughs> I think if they don't want to be around, they don't want to be around. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Especially, especially baleen whales. They're like, see ya. They hold their breath for twenty minutes and disappear. Bye bye. They go. They go a mile out, tail throw, so that you all go that way, and then they jet left. They jet left. <laughs> <laughs> I saw today coming in on the snorkel trip. We are almost back to Motley Harbor, um, probably within a half mile. There's this whale just kind of laying at the surface, like dorsal fin and tail stock up. And I was like, this looks like a mom, but I don't see the calf. And so we just kind of waited and waited. There was a little bit of congestion at the harbor entrance anyway. And this little calf pops up, light gray, like brand new dorsal fin still curled over. No fetal folds, but like still kind of awkward at swimming, (laughs) like definitely (laughs) less than a week old. Laying on mom's head, like touching mom the whole time. It was so cute. And it was also like, I was like, you're kind of a late bloomer, little one. Yeah. Like, it's kind of late in the season to have little, little calves like that. So that was super cute. That's cool. Yeah. I still have not seen like a baby, 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 baby humpback. It was so teeny tiny. Hawaii is your best bet. I know. Yeah. I got to go to Hawaii or Cabo or one of those places. Yeah. Maybe next year. Maybe next year. Hopefully things will be safer next year. That's the plan. Yeah. Eric, anything to share? I just Let had... me guess. Let me guess. Gray wait. whales. An owl. Oh, wait. An owl. Those owls. dolphins. Owls. Owls. Yeah. All and the what dolphins. What was the other thing you saw besides the badger? You saw something else. Muskrat. Muskrat. <laughs> wow. I I all hang, the hang out looking for... Hang out with river otters and then muskrats show up and yeah, I had that owl kill a lizard. <laughs> no wonder pig me out. Owl killed a lizard? Yeah, right in front of us. It's crazy. Just freaking snatched it up, huh? Yeah, so it's like down. <laughs> came down from a tree, grabbed a lizard, and started eating it right in front of us. Owl. Shredded it. A northern pig me owl. It's like this big. They're like Are only like seven in inches. Eric, yeah. enlighten us. <laughs> enlighten us <laughs> about the northern pig me owl. The what? Oh, it's it's very small. It's like only about I think max size is like seven inches, and it's like smaller than those burrowing owls that I see. Wait, but it looks. It's cute as heck. You know what it looks like? Um, a burrowing owl. I'm googling but, it. But smaller. It kind of reminds me of those. Um... <laughs> you see this how is cute what they it looks are? like? It's funny as heck. Yeah, they almost look like fake because they're. This so looks cute. like that little Furby thing. Those little. Oh like... my god, that is really cute. What yeah, the heck? They almost looks like. What was you remember and where Luke Skywalker was hiding on that island and those little oh guys, the pork porkies or porkies or something, they look like those. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where what's their range? Like, do you know? Yeah, it's all through the West Coast here. But yeah, here it is. Like can you see it killing a lizard? Can you see it? Can you see it? It's, it's too, it's it like too a, cute uh, to kill a lizard. What the the no, heck? that's the thing. They're they're that's cute as heck, but they're a like killer. He'll kill things like bigger than bigger than himself. Dang, uh, homie. Wow, they have really cool feathers on their like the plumage on their chest yeah. is really cool, and so, they have all those speckles on their head. Thank you for listening to the Owl Nerds, everyone. I was gonna say, welcome back to the Owl Nerds podcast. <laughs> Owl Nerds. Uh, uh, actually, it was the <laughs> Northern Rat- Pygmy Owl podcast. Yeah, welcome Northern to the Northern Pygmy Owl podcast. appreciation moment. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh I saw like pond turtles too. That, was, that made me happy. Yeah. Oh, pond turtles. Yeah, pond turtles are. Cool. They're, They're the only native native, you know. Native turtles. What, kind of, what kind of pond turtles? Pond turtles, like you know. I would you know, guess the Southwest western or, pond turtle. Western pond turtle, but it <laughs> got split. It's split now, so it's like now the yeah, north was... northwest pond turtle or something like that. What was it? I forgot. So, I, I don't know. I didn't even know they got split. 
I don't know, dude. I'm not a herpetologist. I know, sure. me either. So did you find it? Was it? Did it have his head in a hole, like in a tree? It was in a tree. In fact, I I, I did I did this shot. It kind of was like the where, where's where's Waldo. It's no fun when I show you guys like this, but like it's I kid you not, it's this big. Can you see my finger? <laughs> that big. So like the dad, like you know, find oh like, that's no good. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just put it on Instagram, Eric. Yeah, you can't even see it, so you know. Oh well. Oh, I saw yeah, it. I it's so tiny. It was kind of fun, but but what's funny is people <laughs> were like, standing there like bird paparazzi, and then. It was probably there for hours, just no one could find it. You know? And then that's it just awesome. decided to come down and kill a lizard in front of us. That's well, that's cool. fun. Thank you, that's something, for Al Nerds. For the that's something I really appreciate about Eric, is that he's just, like, always looking for new things. I gotta be better about that. I just don't know oh, where I to found the look, chameleon. or, like, where to go. I, nice. I saw, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, Did I went you go to the lavender, lavender farm? farm. Yeah. Nice. That's the yeah, thing. I I think a... Everyone well, should love Everyone should love all all the animals. Doesn't matter. Definitely, definitely. Just killer whales. Oh god, here we go. Again. <laughs> Someone else asked me about that the other day on the boat. I was like, not that I I love killer whales. It's just that everyone like leaves their brain at the dock once killer whales show up. You know. Like, oh, I I probably I probably put, I probably put that out there a little bit too much. Yeah, so Adam that. leaves his Air brain at the dock. Sees anything that's a that's a cetacean. Dude, when I get back on the ocean and I see a common dolphin, gonna I'm going to lose his mind. By yeah. mind. Especially, so yeah, all three of you have been out here in the Monterey Bay when, when orcas show up. And you know what happens, right? You know, so. Yes. It's so, like, oh, my God. Someone commented on my story and they were like, you were really calm during that. Like, the humpback is under yeah, the boat. Were, like, literally. I just don't go. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just can't even. <laughs> he does like, internally. I focus on so it. Adam. You have to focus up, dude, and get shots. Like you can't be screaming like a girl. Like oh, yeah, I can that. Do, I can do both. I no swear, can't. I can do both. Look, look at my Instagram. Adam's <laughs> juggling his camera. <laughs> I just watch Adam's videos to hear him how high pitched he can get. I focus up, dude. I pull out camera lenses, switching camera angles, and crying a little. I have like a one tear maybe that hits the like. <laughs> but really, it's just to like get the you know the eye flow. Oh <laughs> how many, my god! How many times have you guys actually had someone cry from happiness on your boat? Oh, definitely a couple times, like more couple than a times, few times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Times. we play the. I mean, oh. playing the hydrophone uh, uh, gets people see. going. I yeah, think actually someone cried in hours when I was there. Yeah, during the hydrophone, a lady. Yeah. she was like, "This is the most unbelievable thing I've ever heard in my entire life." Yeah. Yep. I had a lady last last night. Yeah, last night I was working uh, Sunset Whale Watch, and I was just bartending. I was filling in for the the food and beverage service person but the people that were sitting like close to me where i was working behind the bar were like locals and the lady was like this is the best day ever and she like hugged me like four times and kissed me through her mask and i was like whoa dude what's happening but also yeah i was like how COVID, much, ah! how much did you give her to drink jeez not that much she was just stoked <laughs> on the whales and everything about it it wasn't a really good trip i mean there's lots of breaching Mom calf pairs that were active, really nice sunset, uh, good whale song. But yeah, she was just like, she's just like, this is the best day of my life. I was like, supposedly right. I cried. Supposedly I cried when the Bairds, the first time I saw the Bairds a few years ago. You did. No, I, did. I wasn't on the boat, but I was told that there was some tears. And then Allergies. afterwards in the, in the office, you were <laughs> insane. <laughs> Allergies. You're like you've been running your hands through your hair. Eric had a sip your of beer. Hair was sticking straight up beer. off your head. <laughs> Dude, that's all Barrett's aunt and with calves like too. That was insane. Oh yeah. Yeah, except his hair wasn't that long. Oh, Adam was God. like maybe a third of that length, and he's just like <laughs> he's got his hands on his head and his back to me because he's on his laptop, and then he turns around. And he's like, I saw Barrett's beaked whales. I'm like, I know you already told me like 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> I have a photo or a video of Eric's hair blowing in the wind through the. He doesn't even know I have it it's on my cell phone. He's literally sitting out the window, and I think he was kind of cranky that morning. And his hair is just blowing in the wind. <laughs> so that's gonna be a uh, post for all of our Patreon followers. <laughs> oh, I hope I can find it. Uh, if you can find it, definitely <laughs> post it in there. It's Speaking of Patreon long. followers, yeah. we have three more new ones since the last time we recorded. Maybe four. So thank you wow. for supporting thank us. We're know. like thank you everyone. So I'm so blown away by how many people have joined on lately. So thank you so much for that. That makes a big difference. You guys are for awesome. Us. We've been posting a little bit more on there too. I know I I've been trying to post more. Slater's been trying to do it more. 
So, oh, now I'm look going out. on the Patreon flipping stuff. water, dude. I'm going to start posting more. Yay. And Adam's oh. going to make me. I need to post on Yeah, yeah, yeah good, because apparently I can't make you, so maybe Adam can make you. Adam, I, Adam, text, I text him every second. I'm like, post that. Post it now. Send me a video. It. I'll prop it. I'll edit it. Just, just post it when I get it done. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it sounds like? <laughs> Yes, it is. Like prop edited, sound added, bye. Hashtag it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, okay. Give me a video cred. <laughs> no, dude, I don't need video creds. Yeah, he says he doesn't need video cred, and then he comments on there. Sick edit, bro. <laughs> Such oh, a yeah, little he troll. Did. Yeah, sick edit, bro. <laughs> he added the sound to the video yesterday. That, oh, for the last <gasps> one. Because I wanted to post on there, and he was like, I'll do it. I slowed it down. You know, I sped it up. I can way. tell when it's Adam yeah. and when it's you, by the way. Yeah, because I, I don't. He puts it in like crazy, crazy. I wasn't gonna put you on blast like that, but you already kind of hinted at it that Adam had done some of the posts. I could definitely tell that it was Adam. Why? <laughs> Adam, 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 is it Adam like fangirled on the down low while typing a caption that was supposedly from Slater. Nah. <laughs> oh no, I wrote that caption. <laughs> the Patreon yeah, one? Oh no. No, the Patreon one. I could tell no, Adam wrote I, it. I posted that. I wrote that. No, it was 100 percent Slater. I bet oh, I, Adam. I can't wait to hear from Slater. I bet if Adam turns his camera a little bit to the right. There's a poster of like a Slater. On a Slater. Okay, yeah. Let me tell you something. It is so awkward to talk about your stuff. <laughs> the saying? other way. You're right. Let me Fair tell you guys something. Slater, it is so awkward Slater to be like, body. I'm Slater Moore and I'm a professional photographer. Like it just sounds so weird coming from me. But when someone else on the boat does it, it sounds a lot different coming. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. If the captain says, go check out Slater's work down in the galley, he's yeah, a sure. photographer, it sounds way better than when I'm like, you guys better come down and check him out. It's lit. Yeah. Like, That's really, that's really it's weird. Lots of fire photos, dude. I never do that. <laughs> Luckily, Dave does it for me. It, like, it's, just, oh. telling you, it's, it's always going to be better if someone else. Because then yeah. they can speak from their real heart. If they really, truly believe yeah. in your work, they can be like, dude, he's got great work. If you guys have the time, check it out. If you don't, then you suck. Bye. <laughs> Get off my boat right now. <laughs> then hashtag it and leave, dude. <laughs> <laughs> <You> suck. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Um, so I have four things to talk about. Three of them are sort of interrelated. And then we'll kind of wrap things up here. Is so it sad? We're gonna... Sad again? No. Um, no, not really. The first one, we're going to go out of order based on what's on the list. The first one's kind of exciting. Um. I guess you could be melancholy about it if you want, but there was a new calf born to L Pod. Woo woo! L125. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Center for Whale Research put out their normal media release information. So, L125 was cited uh, in mid February. They put their press release out on the 17th, but the calf had been born. Uh, before that, they think it was a month to a month and a half old at the date of their sighting. And all three pods had come into Harrow Strait the day that they sighted and identified the new calf. It is born to L86. Her name is Surprise. Surprise. Is that right? Yeah. Surprise, you had a whale. That's right. And <laughs> um, unfortunately, Surprise only has uh, one other living calf out of all the calves that she's given birth to it is a male l106 that was born in 2005 but her other two calves um after l106 died so um one was actually hit uh one was actually they suspect killed by blunt force trauma during military exercises jeez um and then one didn't live very long after birth so um yeah, that's well, this was kind almost of, a happy, happy kind of bittersweet, topic. but it is exciting to have a new baby, especially an L pod, because um, yeah. they haven't had many, and so it's good to see one there, and hopefully they will well, do when, well. When they when they were here, um, L one twenty four was just born. He was a couple months old. Is that so? Lucky? That's lucky. Yep, um, lucky was the last before, obviously. Um, L125, but the, I don't think K Pod has actually had a baby in a really, Years. really long time. Years. Years. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of alarming. But, yeah. you know, L Pod has been having some babies here and there. Um, and then uh, J Pod as well. I think we're up to J58. There's J56 to Vino, J57, J58, Phoenix, and something else. Well, maybe so. K Pod's making the babies. And that's where L, L Pod's. I mean... You never know. I mean, totally. You could. 
say that all the males in uh, <clears throat> A-Pod are uh, frisky. Oh, but that's great, great, great news. Great news yeah. to have a have another a new baby. Uh, Southern resident killer whale baby. So we will take all those that we can get. To me, also, that's like a big motivator to like get serious about you know managing the fisheries and managing their food source and and coming to some sort of agreement amongst all the community stakeholders, right? Like we've Definitely. got to harmonize. We've got brand new babies that are in the most dire situations right now j pod had a calf what a couple months ago well when you look when you look at it in probably the past two years there's probably been at least five five new births and that's and that's really good and they're all they all seem to be doing pretty good um they haven't been you know like the typical like southern resident killer whale have a baby and then it's a stillborn or have a baby and dies a few hours after birth like these babies seem to be living um, at least a couple years. So well, but they're also spending I, a lot less time in the sound, so we may be missing and, some of that. And yeah, definitely, we we could be. Um, but it seems like the babies that we see that are born are, are are doing pretty well. So that's definitely a good sign. And I think you're right; it should be a motivator. Um, you know, we talked to Sarah and Jeff a couple weeks ago, and they both said the same thing. You know, with every every new calf, it just gives you so much more hope. And um, yeah, so. So, yeah. That's what I have to say about the Southern Resident Killer Whales. We've talked about them a lot. Yeah. Over and out. Over and <clears> out. <throat> so, um, I I came across this term uh, a couple months ago, maybe a month ago, called anthropause. So every time you every time you put that in the in the in the Google Doc, I thought you were trying to say Anthropocene, but no. you just anthropause. Couldn't. Oh, anthropos. I just looked up Anthropocene to see what that was. <laughs> no, the Anthropocene is the age of man time that we're in, which is the age of humans. Yeah, I knew that. But <laughs> this is in regards to COVID lockdowns around the world. So oh, some people, interesting. Some people were calling it the Great Pause, um, but people have kind of renamed it and called it an Anthropause. Hmm. And so I don't have any results to share i don't know if anybody really has any results to share yet but it's kind of an interesting concept to think about so um the journal nature did kind of like a just an article talking about several research projects that are ongoing during the anthropause and they kind of defined it so um they said we noticed that people started referring to the lockdown period as a great pause but felt a more precise term would be helpful we propose anthropause to refer specifically to a considerable global slowing of modern human activities, notably travel. We are aware that the correct prefix is anthropo for human, but we opt in to short it um, and for the ease of use, where the missing po is, it's still echo echoed in the pronunciation of pause, so anthropause. Um, this is very science-y explanation yes. of why you say anthropause, but you know, this, is, this is someone writing for the journal Nature. For this article so they're doing yeah. uh they're doing work here in the monterey bay we actually had a uh, um ari freelander and brandon southall out here tagging whales trying to you're stealing out. my thunder oh they actually that's they're not the done next yet. one that's the next one after this one so i'm not done yet i know yes you're right eric they're even studying it in monterey bay um so there's sort of some interesting like pluses and minuses to this anthropause right um, some of it has to do with there are some people in urban areas are anecdotally saying they're seeing more animals than usual in urban areas. Like animals are coming out of their places where they were disturbed and and hiding from people's activities. Um, but then also like wow. there are urban dwelling animals like rats and, and gulls and monkeys that are very reliant on our food waste. And like Great us eating outside in public parks and, you know, people oh. go outside and feed the birds. I don't see many monkeys here in Monterey. <sighs> this is a global thing I'm talking oh, about okay. here. Um, yeah. So how are those bread bowls for the gulls in Monterey? Like <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they, banned, they, banned that, they banned that one guy <laughs> off, the, you know, off the wharf. So I don't see that anymore. I'm looking at these photos. Oh, well, I, I actually I googled anthropos and I'm looking at the images on Google, and it's showing like coyotes and um, 
even like uh what's it called mountain lions and stuff in mm-hmm. the streets mm-hmm. and it's like when you look at these photos it it totally says like okay if humans were not here they would just slowly start creeping back through the cities yeah. and taking them over yeah yep i agree but the thing is, it, a lot of it's not just because there was lack of traffic or people out and about. A lot of it is is obviously habitat loss and stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. our, our mountain lions, like you guys know, even in Orange County, I mean, mountain lions yeah. walking through the middle of the city. There was one here in San Francisco, like like right in the city of San Francisco. Like we couldn't talk about the busier street. You walk down Market, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, did you so. did you go to the talk about mountain lions with me, Eric? Where they had the tag. Uh, like they had the they had the radio collar on collar. one, and it it hid in a bush in downtown Santa Cruz all day because yeah. there was people out and about. And then when it like when night came, it left. It took off. Yeah, yeah. Well, what, about that. You, uh, what's your Adam, class on that actually? What's that yeah. guy's name? That is twenty two. Who? The dude, Steve Winter. No, the guy doing the project on uh the California stuff. Oh, um, oh, Mark Romanoff and uh, and uh, Rick Rosenthal. Rick Rosenthal. They they were telling me about that whole like situation with it staying in a bush for an entire day. Like, yeah, isn't that crazy? And no, everybody yeah. walks by it. I yeah. took a I took a class in a when I, at UCSB. There was a it was called Wildlife in America, and it was my favorite class. And it kind of went through the history of you know specifically California's you know relationship with wildlife, and it talked about this just, you know, mountain lions. And it was so funny. We were talking, we had this um, chapter on mountain lions. And as we had this chapter on mountain lions, somebody in Santa Barbara had captured like on their like, like whatever doorbell, like Oh, the camera, ring camera. The ring yeah. camera of like a mountain lion going through their neighborhood. And then it came actually down to UCSB. And we had like two or three days where the canvas was on lockdown because it was like spotted <laughs> like right here. Um, so yeah. cool. But, but that's the, I think that's a beautiful part about, you know, living in California is that we are a state that tries to do our best for wildlife. Um, you know, we obviously have that, I haven't heard much on it lately, but that grant, the proposal to, for the wildlife, um, crossovers, bridge, the oh, crossovers, yeah. bypasses, yeah. yeah. The bypasses. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that I think Especially every for state should lions. implement a hundred percent. And, you know, when you look at the, the populations of mountain lions and, you know, California, whether it be the Santa Monica ones or the ones in OC, you know, these animals, their ranges should, you know, historically be 50 miles, but they, they don't have that in California. So, you know, there, there should be a way for them to be able to traverse between their different ranges. Um, yeah. yeah I, I hope California continues to do that. So. What was the minimum? It was like each male, right? Needs like a 50 square miles or something yeah. crazy like that. Yeah. Uh, females are, females yeah. are like 30 or something. Um, yeah. So I want to show you. Where's that picture? Oh, I forget. Kaylin, you remember you and I went to that meeting in Monterey when we first started working at Discovery Whale Watch when we were doing that thing for the city? What was it? We joined some, like, group. Oh, the Visitors Bureau. Yeah. The county County Visitors Bureau. I remember yeah. the one guy was proposing, like, all that stuff to, like, yeah. for one of the streets so that the deer could yeah. go under. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, because yep. they kept getting hit on the highway right there. Yeah. Oh, geez. Yeah, there's the it's, deer. It's, are a huge, crazy. it's a huge problem. Well, and not only is it a huge problem for wildlife, it's a huge traffic safety issue as well. Like if you're looking at, you know, safe roadways and, and keeping visitors safe upon their journey to and from Monterey, I mean, yeah. it's not good for the wildlife for sure. But also like if the road is notoriously dangerous for interactions with wildlife at night, like that's also something that the city has to consider. Definitely. Yeah. So. It's crazy how some of the animals. Where's the term, man? You might know. It's it's out of my head, but it was back in school. Raccoons, coyotes, they just adapt so well. There's like actually a term for it. They adapt so well to suburban and urban areas. You know. Yeah, there is a term. I can't yeah. quite right now. Um, like, well, go ahead. Yeah, but like cities like San Francisco, if you walk around, oh, the- I kid you not, like the touristy parts. There's signs like "Watch out for coyotes." You know, "Watch out for raccoons." They're just like. They're just there now. It's a part of life. They're like a pigeon, pretty much. Yeah. One of, one of the things that I um, really studied in, in college, and I actually put my emphasis on it, was a, like a connection to, to, to nature with people. But one of the most interesting things is something called the wildlife urban interface. And it's essentially just the zone where, you know, <laughs> later, where, uh, you know, urban environments meet. Uh, natural environments and mm-hmm. there's always gonna ha- there's always gonna be that crossover between people and nature 
It's yeah. just a matter of how you can manage that and and how you can coexist with one another. And you can and you know whether it be like your backyard if you live in the mountains or like you know it, it could also be like the shipping lanes in Santa Barbara. Mm-hmm. You know, like any any place where humans and wildlife interact. Um, and again, like like I said, I, I think California is the people of California especially are starting to you know, see the value in nature and wildlife. And I, I hope that can be implemented in other states and across the world. Um, but it just seems like they're, as we progress, it seems like we're starting to, you know, realize we have to coexist with these animals and, and really, you know, help them out, which is going to help us out in the long run. And people aren't scared of really, you know, obviously like mountain lions are top predators, you know, great white sharks are top predators, but at the end of the day, like they're just animals trying to survive in our modern world. And I think yeah. people are starting to understand that a little bit more, which is have great. You guys, have you guys ever heard someone describe coastal bottlenose dolphins of like, as like the coyotes of the sea, how they've adjust, especially our coastals here. And, you know, that's here very by interesting harbor, point. they just like hang out, like, you know, in our, our bigger harbors, like LA Harbor, you know, Long Beach and stuff like that. They just can adapt to, what we made, you know, created that giant harbor that was once for the military, and they're still in there, you know? Yeah, like, when I saw them inside the Naples, inside, uh, what is it, Los Alamitos Bay, Los yeah. Alamitos Harbor. Part of our life now. Yeah, they adjust. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's pretty yeah. impressive how adaptable some animals can be. Yeah. You know, like, just trying to survive, you know, especially the coastal bottlenose, you know, they're living off the coast of California, and I'm sure they're running into countless amounts of pollutants and trash and whatever, but they're still able to make a living, and it's it's pretty impressive. But. Yeah, and yeah. it's usually like oh. decades. It's usually like decades you see changes with those animals, but like yeah, but with coastal bottlenose, I mean, look at the expansion within our lifetimes. You don't have to be an old man to like, oh, when I was a kid, but like uh, coastal bottlenose, what is it? Just like what ten years ago, if you saw one in Monterey, they would have been like, ooh, but. You know, uh, they started to push up, I think, in the late '80s. But the yeah. El Nino, yeah, one yeah. of the one of the El Ninos kind of triggered them. Well, hey, let's go explore. That was thing, you know. that was a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, that that was, for Eric, that was just like a couple days ago. <laughs> a couple days ago. <laughs> you know what, well, Eric? Do you remember the government like shut down? Thirty plus years ago. <laughs> do you remember <laughs> when the elephant seals showed back up in? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, like, it was, yeah, it was on Yeah, because in the parking lot. Point, Point Reyes. Point, yeah. There's badgers there. Because there was no people there during the government shutdown or whatever. The park was closed or something. And then elephant seals on the beach. And all the way up to the parking lot. Are they still there? Yeah, they're still there. In fact, there's so many right now that they actually closed Drake's Beach. Because uh, they will sometimes, they'll literally go through, you know, they're so big. They'll just go right through the holes. And they they already set up K-rails to kind of discourage it. But obviously, you still need a little tiny walkway for people to get through and they just like go right through there <laughs> yeah. but what's funny is you can literally park your car open the door and look over the k-rail and there and there they are you know so yeah uh, and they they have yeah. rangers all over the beach and they put up signs to say you know be like three car lengths are like 25 feet you know and stuff like that but it got to the point where i think there's too many of them and especially yeah. weekend, you know even three rangers probably couldn't really um, handle all that. I feel like our elephant seals would attack us. Like, I versus mean, the southern elephant, you know what I mean? I like feel the, like the southern elephant seals would also attack you. I guess it's the babies that they're seeing huh, on the beach. It's not like it's the... It's the big males that drinks, yeah. It's the males. In fact, here's... You know, they're just right there. Uh, yeah. Cool. They're, they're, they're there. So then, there's a couple other aspects that this this paper is looking at kind of circling back to what Adam's talking about with the human wildlife interface, right? So not only do we have animals that have adapted to our urban environments and are now dependent on us for food, there are also were people during shutdown that were flocking to these green spaces that don't normally have a lot of people in them to get away from Mm. the stress of COVID and be outside. So now you're disturbing a whole new group of animals (laughs) that are not used to humans being around them. Um, But then also there's other things like in certain areas around the world, poaching is more common when there's less people around because there's no one there to catch you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there was also another one that said concerns have been raised that in low income countries, economic hardship may even force increased exploitation of natural resources. So some of these may have totally 
uh, adverse effects that no one was really expecting. Yeah. Wow. That's really, I, that's like right up my alley. I, I love stuff like that, but I didn't know the term anthropos. So that's, that's yeah. very interesting. So um, in the show notes, which I post on our Facebook, um, I'll put the comments, I'll put the links to these two articles because that one was from Nature. And then there's another one from uh, the journal Science and it's talking about the anthropos as well. And this is where Ari comes in, Eric. So um, after COVID happened, the Ari was doing work down in Antarctica and they had to leave because it was like, get back in the country now or you won't be able to. Um, and he was working on a project that was tourism and fishing and the effects on whales. Um, so then they kind of turned it around and started answering those questions in Monterey. Um, I don't think they have any data that they're ready to release, but yeah. Um, it's an interesting question. And so then this article talks about, you know, what happens when tourists disappear. Um, and another example of people feeding wildlife, like in the Bahamas, people feed iguanas grapes. Like that's like, you can buy grapes and like put them on a stick and feed them to the iguanas. Like that's something you can do. Um, and so like feeding these animals, not only does it have a huge effect on their population and behavior as a whole, but then all of a sudden that food source is gone because no one's traveling to the Bahamas. Like now what happens? Um, and then there's a lot, this one talks a lot about the coral reef studies, which there's a couple going on in um, Hawaii, but this is also talking about in French Polynesia and a couple other places. Like what happens when a bunch of people are no longer getting in the water around reefs, putting you know, their germs, their sunscreen, um, their debris on top of these reefs, like what, how do how the reefs the, respond, yeah, you know, how does the reef respond? Some of the initial, um, data that came out of Molokini, which is where I took tour tourist snorkeling today was that more large predatory fish spend longer periods of time on the reef when on there's the not reef. people there. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, and I noticed sense. that last year when I, as people started to leave the island, there's that mass exodus in March and April. Um, I still went snorkeling every day by myself because we were allowed to go into the ocean. Um, and there was more and more like bluefin trevally or aluas and, um, you know, big like knife jaws. And like, there was a lot more big fish on the reef as the weeks went on when I was there, which is kind of nuts. So it's. It's so tough because, you know, there obviously needs to be a balance and we all, we all work in the eco tour industry and, you know, we, we encourage people to have a connection with nature and, you know, get out there and, and spend time in nature. And it's just, it's tough because you do sometimes see the impact, but it's also like, you know, like we always talk about, you know, where is that, where is that line where it's worth it? And like what your mm -hmm. cause is, is, you know, helping and where it's hurting. Mm -hmm. Um, well, and some of these, some of these ocean things, especially when it comes to noise, I think are going to be really hard to see a difference because we shopped online a lot more. So there's way more cargo ships going across the ocean. Yeah. People that could afford to buy their own boat bought one and bought went one. out. Um, so I think there's going to, you know, like even in Monterey, when tours weren't going, there were still boats leaving the harbor from some tour companies to go out and look at whales you know yeah. or to go fish or whatever fishing still happened i mean it was i think the orders were a lot less because people weren't going to dine in at restaurants anymore but um yeah i mean i think that we didn't get that many vessels off the ocean during this yeah or reality. Slide, slide disappear there oh there he is <laughs> you disappeared yeah, I just heard it's really off. tough like I, I recently shared a maybe controversial video um, that went kind of viral. It was like the one with people paddleboarding next to that juvenile great white shark. Oh yeah, and that got picked up by a couple of news agencies, and people were talking about it, and there was a lot of chatter and just like, you know, why would you, why would I encourage this behavior? And like, yeah, I, I understand that like that's an apex predator and and you know they deserve tremendous respect but i also see the value in in going out there and being able to letting people know they're out there yeah exactly well you know in in santa barbara you know people are starting to become more aware of this spot and and if you let people go out there without 
the knowledge or responsibility of what you could potentially see and, you know, what's out there. I think that's more dangerous than putting it out there and letting people know. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, something like that, like, you know, those sharks are obviously, you know, everything with a mouth can bite, you know, I'm not denying that, but for the most part, like those things, I see them, you know, going along the beach and they'll like ignore people and just kind of do their thing. And then just looking for skates and rays. Um, And, you know, I think, when done responsibly, you know, ecotourism is a beautiful thing yeah. and, and, and each party benefits the, the wildlife mm-hmm. and the people. We have a, or, yeah, yeah focus on. there's an organization in the South San Francisco Bay. Um, it's called like what South Bay clean creeks or something. Um, they're really good with like cleaning up the local creeks, you know, in the yeah. South San Francisco Bay. And one thing they've been doing is they also monitor salmon in the area and it's crazy because these creeks i'm talking about are in the middle of like the silicon valley i'm talking like they run like you know right past google headquarters and stuff you you talked about this a little bit yeah Yeah. and they there's salmon there there are freaking like king salmon you know breeding in the middle of the silicon valley and they straight out put the exact locations where where the nests are and i got to actually meet one of the biologists standing there looking at the nest i was like you know so like why did you guys give the exact locations they're like well this is how we see it okay one to salmon once it breeds it's gonna die anyway but two it's it's almost more important right now to just get the word out that hey these people these animals are in the middle of the city and we can save them you know but mm-hmm. they've already literally already caught guys walking with salmon rods down the creek you know while they're while they're monitoring them or you know they've already caught poachers yeah. and stuff like that. but as they see it it's almost it's their point of view is already get the word out you know yeah it's it's just really it's it's a tough thing to talk about i mean a a tough situation to be in but i think at the end of the day like you have to educate people about these species you have to let them know that they're there i mean you don't have to but you know it's just i'd rather have somebody be educated about the great white sharks off the santa barbara coast and know that they're there and know that like for the most part you know they're, they're not willing to they're not going to hurt you you know they're just doing their own thing leave them alone or you know build a connection with them when done responsibly, but you just have to do it responsibly. So it's a toss up, you know, you can handle it a whole bunch of different ways. And I don't it's, know. it's also really species specific too. That's another, thing. it is very species yeah. specific. It is. It is. He brought up a good point with the salmon, especially, you know, Pacific salmon, King salmon, you know, cause they, they're not like Atlantic salmon or steelhead that can come back and breed. They're going to die anyway. You know, I would yeah. love to go there and photograph salmon. That'd be so cool. I posted probably like almost a year or two years ago now. I went to Point Lobos and I had not Point Lobos. What's the other place? Ana Nueva. Ana Nueva, yeah. And I had uh, I was holding a garter. No, I was holding like a yellow belly racer or whatever it is. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And I I tagged Point Lobos in it, and some guy went off on me. It was like you just told everybody where the snake was, and I was like I didn't give them like the exact spot it lives under the rock. You know what I mean? Like. It is on your own level so big, like the fact that the you know the the odds of them finding it anyways, I don't know. But the guy's account was like anti geotag, and he was like, yeah, <laughs> he had a about. big thing how like Instagram's showing the planet and uh, whoa. yeah, it was yeah. I mean, I think um, it'll be interesting to see what continues to come out of these studies, right? Because like humans are the most invasive species. Um, mm-hmm. And that that's never going to go away. And unfortunately, like a lot of people still need to realize that like the planet wasn't built for them. Right. Like the planet functions as this whole living, breathing thing, Mm -hmm. whether we're here or not, you know, like we came from this long process of, of evolution and, trial and error and somehow lucked out into this very pervasive and intelligent and clever species. Right. So, but there's plenty of other things that evolved completely outside of human activity that still exist in our human activities now, like totally messing it up. So how do we, can we come out of this like anthropause better is what I want to know. Like, are there some things that could like never make a comeback that would be for the better? Like maybe cruise ships. <laughs> no, yeah, they're true. already going again. I know. Now we're going again, yeah. I know. Uh, it's yeah. That's an older. To be honest, cruise ships are an older generation thing, though. 
I <laughs> hope they phase out. At least the they really are huge ones. You My know? grandma goes on cruise. Like, will go on a cruise. Like with her boyfriend. I got no interest like, in going on cruises, dude. Me either, because I want to get off the freaking boat and and like see. I want to stop and like you know what I mean. Like I don't want to. Yeah. Oh, we're lost for four and a half hours. Oh, yeah. I got to get back exactly. on the boat and eat dinner. <laughs> exactly. Or I just and it's just, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> So that's my that's my two cents on everything. To you sum always up. have such a beautiful way of summing everything up. You were talking and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so nice. <laughs> She's so sweet. You were. Adam's such you a little like, fangirl of us. It's hilarious. Yeah, I still am. <laughs> Wait, there's True. something on here. I moved it. I think it's going to take too long for this episode to go through that Aww. soundscape paper. So I think we should just wrap it up here. Okay. And we'll do that for up. episode 72. We'll do that then. Oh Whoa, dude. Up. Episode 72, Eric Slater, Adam, Caitlin. Same time uh, next week. supposed to be Adam, Eric, Caitlin, Slater. <laughs> oh, Adam, Bill Gorder. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys are too worried A-E-K-S. about that. A-E-K-S, aches. Aches? Somebody help me. Nerds. This is what I go through. Well, nerds. <laughs> I know, Eric answered the Skype call flipping us off, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> With two fingers. Oh, my gosh. Listen here. I don't mind mind your manners. All right, well, if you made it this far into the episode with all of our random ramblings about pygmy owls this, and everything else. This was a random order. Ass- <laughs> the secret word Thank is waffles. Thank you so much. <laughs> if you made it this far, comment waffles on our Instagram. Post. Yeah, do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, thank you again to all of our Patreon supporters. I'm so uh, blown away by all of you. That's amazing. And um, yeah, if you don't follow us, it's at Whale Nerds on pretty much everything. So just find us wherever you're looking. I got a question. People asking where to listen to us. And you can listen to us on most podcast streaming platforms. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean. Pandora, Stitch, Pandora, YouTube, any Google pod Podcasts. Place. Yeah. 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 We're on all the pod <laughs> Waffle Podcasts. We're on the pod places. If that was the thing. We'd be on it. <laughs> oh, I also had a question from this really weird guy. He said, um, <laughs> He's probably listening. He's called a weird guy. No, he said, His name's Adam. He said, Adam said, um, <laughs> he said, he oh, said will that humpback whale still be lunge feeding when I get there? <laughs> Got him. This really weird guy. Got him. Right, I thought bye, we were everyone. not group texting during pu- recording. No, this was like two, a day or two days. On Instagram, yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.